Grace and peace, you're listening to United We Pray. Taking racial struggles to the throne of grace, United We Pray is a ministry devoted to prayer about racial strife, especially between Christians. We want to help Christians pray and think about race in ways that are biblical and helpful, clear and hopeful. You can learn more about our work at uwepray.com. That's U-W-E-P-R-A-Y.com, where you can find articles, previous episodes, and more. Grace and peace, friends. Welcome back to United We Pray. Austin Suter joined again by Reverend Joshua Chapman. How you doing, Josh? (laughs) Oh, the Reverend. That's pretty funny. Uh, Man, (laughs) oh, that's even funnier. (laughs) Uh, I'm doing, man, I'm I'm exhausted and excited at the same time. Like, it's definitely possible. Uh, So, yeah, exhausted from recently having done a half marathon and, and still recovering from that. Uh, and excited in that, man, my wife and I, we're going on a date tonight. Amen. And so, yeah, yeah. And so, cool, got the Kool-Aid smile Very going good. on. Uh, how you doing? How you doing, uh, brother? We're doing okay. Kids are kids are sick, so we're. I'm feeling pretty oh, off man. today. But uh, so if I if mm-hmm. I start talking weird, <laughs> it rain us back in. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt you do, brother. I doubt. I'm sorry that you're no, feeling weird the weather okay. that your family is. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wanted to do this episode today uh, talking about the work of bridge building and how, you know, those of us who care about ethnic harmony in the church and are trying to sort of push these conversations, it can be hard because it's not always well received. Um, and we mm, talked about the mm, yeah. essential things we need. Obviously, this ministry is devoted to praying about racial strife, ethnic disharmony, um, and prayer is essential. It's like, we don't have any hope of succeeding apart from prayer. We know that. Absolutely. But you said um, that you thought another thing was necessary, and that is a charitable disposition. Mm. How would you define a charitable yeah. disposition? Really good question. So I would say a charitable disposition is, you know, disposition is more so like the attitude and the posture of one's heart. And charity or charitable is one of those old English terms that we don't use very often, Um, you know, specifically in the context of love. Like oftentimes we think of charity, we just think about, you know, giving to a good cause. Um, But I would define charity more in the language of love, you know, uh, sometimes King James, I believe, yeah. uses the word charity. It, it is synonymous for love. So I would say a charitable disposition is one's attitude and heart posture is one towards loving um, those that they are interacting with in conversation with and stuff like that. Now, is having a disposition, is, is that just like a function of your wiring? Like how God's made you, God made some of us nicer than others? <laughs> Oh, man. So we all made an image of God, and the God who made us is a God of love. You know, triune God, he is love within himself, a giving love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And being made in his image, you know, you think about the communicable attributes. These are attributes that God possesses within himself in infinite measure that he has, tr- like, given his image bearers to be able to reflect. And so we do have the ability to love. Um, some may have may be naturally inclined towards niceness. Um, at the same time, I do believe that since we're made in the image of God, we can and we should love. Um, now, the reality is sin has corrupted us. And so we definitely need the Lord. Yeah, we definitely need the Lord and, and we need his grace. We need his spirit. I think all Christians, you know, seeing that we've been redeemed by Christ, we have his spirit living within us. We have the second command to love our neighbor as ourselves. I do believe that by God's grace and the spirit, fruit, part of the fruit of the spirit is love. We can and we have the ability to and we should show love. That's a long answer, but yeah. Well, no, it's really helpful because you're getting at something. You're not just talking about a feeling or a natural wiring. Like it's in, it's in vibes. This is you're talking about something specific. <laughs> yeah, 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 most definitely. Like, Man, it, it, it takes effort. Um, it is something specific, you know, uh, and it's something that we also have to push back against our fleshly desires because those things just doesn't come natural, um, especially within the conversation about race. They can be contentious. 
that can be volatile. There are differing opinions on these matters. And so, like, even when you think about charitable disposition, it's easy to be charitable towards those who think like you. Yep. Like, Jesus gets at that in Matthew 5. You know, if you love those who love you, what, you know, what more are you doing than others? Even the Gentiles do this. You know, so it's easy to do that with people who think like you, who, you know, have the same convictions as you. It's more so the charitable disposition is towards people who think differently than you. And that's where it takes effort. That's where it takes, you know, being empowered by God's spirit to do that. And you're locating this as like basic Christian obedience to the second commandment, second Facts. greatest commandment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Well, we better get it right then. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, do we, how do we know when we're being charitable? Mm. Mm. That's a really good question. Um, I would say we know when we're being charitable. Part of it is being marked by kindness, you know, as we're being kind towards those we're interacting with. You, know, you think about Colossians chapter 3, um, where Paul exhorts the church to put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. And all those those attributes and those virtues are in the context of a relationship. And so if we are living out some of those things, um, being patient, being kind, um, when we're representing well the people that we are in interaction with or we may even disagree with, when we're speaking well of the person um, and refusing to get personal, um, I would say some of those things is, are evidences that where by God's grace we are being charitable and our heart disposition towards them isn't one of anger. We're not, we're not seeing them as an enemy that we need to defeat. <laughs> Uh, what yeah. would you say, though? <laughs> no, I, I really like where you went with that. I think, you know, Christians, we, we, it seems like this comes up pretty often in our conversations, Josh, but like Christians are people who care about truth and we want to get things right and we want to contend for the truth. Yeah. Um, but if we view other people, if we view our relationships primarily as one of correction, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be getting this wrong often mm, because yeah. like, we're seeing other people as like walking errors for us to correct. And let me interrogate mm. you and figure out all the ways you don't think like me so that I can set you straight. Mm. And like, that is just not how the Bible speaks about us relating to each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's really strong. That's really strong. And even that we've belittled the person you yeah. know, to the point to where it's like, we're not seeing them as an image bearer who's worthy of love, who's worthy of honor, who's worthy of respect. Um, the very things that God has spoken about with his, like how we're to interact towards fellow image bearers, fellow people, and yet alone, especially brothers and sisters, like we've given the command to love one another as Christ has loved us. Um, and so they're part of the household of faith. So how much more should we be loving? And and when we're, to your point, you know, when we, when we don't have that disposition of charity, when we're not being charitable, or in fact, like dehumanizing the other person that we're interacting with when God is commanding us to humanize them and love them as an image bearer. And it's a false dichotomy because it, do you choose grace or truth? No, I want them both. <laughs> like, <laughs> Amen. And there might be a time, it, I mean, it, in every relationship, there's times when you disagree and have to work it out. Um, mm -hmm. But if you've already set up the precedent and have, you know, the temperament of love mm. sort of marking the relationships, then yeah disagreements are just going to be so much less contentious. Yeah. Yeah. That's real good. You mentioned how um, if you're not being charitable, you might notice it first in your heart. I think that's probably right. Like we can, we're usually feeling something before we act, mm -hmm. right? What, what are some of those warning signs in your heart? Like how could you, how, what should sort of be a blinking yellow light on your <laughs> dashboard? <laughs> no, that's really, that's really good. Um, one, I would probably say one of the most evident things is our tone. Um, like if we're starting to raise our voice or mm -hmm. we're starting to get sharp, um, that's, I would say that's one of those flashing, or we're tempted towards that. We feel within our heart, the temptation towards that. That's one of those flashing lights in the car, the check engine light, like, yo, you tripping right now. Um, especially you think about Proverbs 15, one. 
A gentle answer turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. And so if I'm being more and more tempted towards um, spewing out a harsh word towards this person or these people that I'm in conversation with about the topics of, you know, ethnic harmony and stuff like that, then that needs to serve as some sort of alarm clock that, man, hey, I'm I'm walking towards the path of not being charitable, you know? Like, yeah. Well, what would you say? Anything to add to that? Or, well, I'm just trying to think through different scenarios because, yes, in the in the, I agree with everything you said, and in the normal course of Christian life, that that's that's probably exactly right. I'm also thinking of different scenarios. Say, someone is going home for the holidays, and mm-hmm. old Uncle Jim are at the table. I feel like we just use that that caricature. <laughs> There's, I know some really nice gyms, uh, but you know, you're you're. <laughs> You got your old uncle at the table who says something like totally out of pocket and Mm -hmm. uh, is like is being straight up racist. Shy uh, was on a few weeks ago and said that it is unloving and unfaithful not to confront that. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm trying to sort of find where the borders are on this of like, uh, do you do you have to extend charity even when you find yourself dealing with someone who is less than charitable? That's a real good question. Um, well, I would certainly agree with Shy, and what I'm encouraging is not by any means disagreeing with him as well. Um, to where we do owe everyone love. Uh, Matthew, I'm not Matthew, but Romans 13 talks about that, and even Jesus himself says, "Love your enemies." Um, and so we do need to love our enemies, even in that moment, the uncle who is being uncharitable. Uh, at the same time, uh, having said that. You know, you do lovingly confront them. You do it in love, though. You do it with gentleness. You do it with humility. Um, You try to do it winsomely by the grace of God. And so what I would say is, yes, still have those conversations, still lovingly confront. And if it's the older Uncle Jim, you know, we got to think about what 1 Timothy 5 says, you know, like treat older men as fathers. So we need to be very careful and honoring uh, and loving in the way that we do confront, challenge, correct even the things that Uncle Jim may spew out at that family hangout. Um, yeah, and I, it gets brought up as as a caricature, as you know, the extreme scenario. But like this is real. Like folks traveling for the holidays have to deal with stuff. Yeah, uh, no, oh, just, yeah. we just had the holiday season here. But uh, listener, if you were in that kind of situation, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, very, very. And it's tempting to, you know, want to repay evil for evil. It's yeah. tempting to want to put this person in their place real quick or to just call them out and man, just go ahead and go off on them. Um, at the same time, like, we need to be compelled by the love of Jesus um, to resist our flesh, to even want to honor him with our speech. You know, and again, that doesn't mean don't have a conversation uh, what it does mean is, like, man, have it in love, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but what was your what was the initial question like? Like, uh, I know we kind of deviated from it. What was the original question you asked? No, like you how, answered it. I, I was just asking how you extend charity even when you're not receiving it. Mm. Uh, but I mean, that's that's familiar Christian stuff, right? Do not repay mm-hmm. evil for evil. Yeah. If you know if your neighbor slaps you on one cheek, you know, like mm-hmm. this is, we're just normal, basic Jesus stuff that is yeah. hard and countercultural, but it's Very. also clear. Like this yeah. is, it's clear. We, we don't get to repay evil for evil. Yeah. Well, and on top of that, you know, there, there is a place of wisdom. I think somewhere in the Proverbs talks about how a wise man sees danger ahead and avoids it, you know? And so yeah. it's like, man, if, if your disposition, this position of my heart is not right, like, I don't need to say anything right now. You know, yeah. one of the wisest things I can do is be yeah. slow to speak, step away, yep. and still follow up. You know, but in the moment, like, recognizing, like, um, you know, a disposition of charity may be me, to step, may be me stepping away in yeah. the moment. That way I don't actually sin against this person in my anger. Let me ask you this, just switching gears slightly. How do you build a culture of charity? So I'm thinking in our churches, in our Mm -hmm. families, if we're parents and have kids, like how do we, how do we build a culture of charity where that sort of scene is normal? 
Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, I know, you know, the name of the podcast, United We Pray, I would say definitely pray. Um, first and foremost, you know, ask and you shall receive. And so pray for God to do that work within us, um, within the people at the, lo- in, within the local church. I also say modeling it um, is very important. Um, commending very well, uh, critiquing, but doing it in a manner that is upbuilding. So living out Ephesians 4, um, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion. So thinking through like, man, in what ways will this actually build this person up? How is this fitting for that? Um, continually expressing love, having conversations with people like how can we go about fostering a culture of charity within, you know, saying within the co- congregation, within this group? Um, you know, one of the things we like, man, my wife and I, we tried to do with our kids is we committed to memory Matthew 22, 37 through 39. You know, like uh, the first and great command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And we're constantly trying to remind um, ourselves and our children, you know, like of that, like, what is the second? <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. So what? how can that look like in this situation um, while giving it time? You know, what would you say? Like, no, I think that's great. And I was I was just thinking about the role of humility in this, um, mm, because I think on. humility is just. Humility underpins so much Christian obedience and love for mm. others. And just the more I'm thinking about me, the less I'm thinking about you, the less I'm thinking about how to love you, you know? And yeah, like, yeah, that's strong. Philippians 2, have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who was the, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Mm. Like just the Jesus is more than our teacher. He's our savior. But mm, the, the personal example of Jesus, who's like bearing patiently with people he made, like mm. the, the gap mm. in, in power and uh, knowledge like has mm. never been greater. Come and on. He's, he's so humble and he's so mm. patient and he's so kind. Mm. When he is the one who has reason not to be. Like mm. if, if there is someone who had an excuse to be, you know, short and impatient with people, it's Jesus. Mm. Um, but he doesn't. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You preaching over there. <laughs> Put this man yeah, in the pulpit. Might, come on. Man, it's coming up. <laughs> Let's in this go. Studio all day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I man preaching that truth. That's good. That's really good. And you're absolutely right, though. Like, humility is needed, is yeah. needed um, to the point you said. Yeah, man, if we're thinking highly of ourselves, uh, we cert- we're thinking lowly of others, and we're certainly not going to extend love to them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And in that moment, though, like, we can, we can talk about this and we can, you know, meditate on the person of Jesus, and that's, that's what we— it's what we need to do. But in yes. that moment, when that person says something that catches you crossways, like it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Very, very, very. Um, yeah. Like it is really, really difficult. Not even going to sugarcoat it um, because, you know, you'd be tempted to uh, to pull like a Shannon Sharp, you know, like uh, I don't know if you watch First Take. I, I watch First Take. I definitely listen to it. And Shannon Sharp, it was a couple of weeks ago on one episode he was saying how LeBron was disrespected by Ime Yudoka. And he was like, you know, I ain't with that Michelle Obama. You know, you say, you go low, I go to the basement. <laughs> 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 so it's like, like that, that's what we're tempted towards. That's what we're tempted towards in that moment. Um, which is why we have to, you know, live out Ephesians 5 in a sense of, mm-hmm. you know, being filled with the Spirit. Uh, we need like, man, we got to pray them quick Nehemiah like prayers, like, Lord, yeah. help me out <laughs> yeah. real quick or reach out to, you know, your brothers and sisters in a quick text, like, yo, pray for me or something like that. Or, man, I'm just going to excuse myself right now 
Um, and so, yeah, like need that, that spirit wrought self-control. Yeah. I just shout out to the lovely Michelle Suter who at several points in my life, like I've just felt the hand on the shoulder. Like if you can just sort of <laughs> see it coming, like. <laughs> I know my wife does the same thing. She puts the hand up. Sometimes she's looking at me. Just like, he does yep, this yep, the look, the look, the eye contact. <laughs> I know, eye contact to start, you know, putting the hand down. I'm like, you right, baby. You right, you right. My bad, my bad. I'm getting a little riled up right now. Yep. <laughs> Especially um, on these topics. Especially on the topics of uh, of race. You know what I'm saying? Racism, uh, ethnic disunity, while seeing there's a need for ethnic unity because of the gospel. And so when... When we ain't vibing and it's getting contentious, like, you know, I need those. I need my wife <laughs> to remind Man. me like, hey, 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 baby. <laughs> yep. Yep. That that convicting tool of the Holy Spirit, you know, a, a good friend or a spouse. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. Grateful. Yeah. Because you mentioned early in this episode, like these are these are virtues which are demonstrated in community. Like mm-hmm. if, you know, I enjoy doing things that are solitary, like being out in the woods and that sort of stuff by myself. But I may feel really charitable mm-hmm. uh, in such a setting, but there is no way to know. I'm not giving any examples to, you know. <laughs> yeah. So in yeah. that community there, we're talking primarily about being, you know, being charitable when you're in disagreement, but you can help yourself in those disagreements by having people who know you and have your back and can tell you when you need to chill. Facts. Facts. And have those conversations with you um, in private afterwards. You know, like, man, I need some people to point out the logs in my eyes, you know, to where it's just like, yeah, Joshua, this is an area where you can grow in. In fact, it was, um, man, I'll never forget the brother who pulled me aside one time, he's an elder at a church I used to be at, you know, and he just lovingly pointed that out to me, um, to which I was just like, man, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, because we really do need that. Yeah, we do. And there's something to be said, too, for knowing knowing your setting and situation. And, like, mm-hmm. if you know there's a difficult conversation coming, like getting prayed up, having yeah. people praying for it uh, yep. when it's going on, you know, just asking for the Lord's help, because... Gosh, in our in our flesh, we're not well equipped for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And even you think about like Psalm one thirty three, b- how beautiful and precious it is. You know, when brothers dwell in unity, it was like, man, if we go if we gonna pursue that, then we need the charitable disposition, and and the pursuit of the charitable position is a pursuit of Christ likeness. So yeah. we need to keep our gaze upon Jesus, meditating on His Word. To the point you said, we know about to have a difficult talk, man. I need to, I need to study some scriptures on love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get that word in me that the Holy Spirit may, you know, bring it to mind to where in those conversations I'm seeking to, to flesh that out. I was having a conversation last evening with a uh, brother in the Lord, dear friend who uh, was in a really tough church situation and, and ended up having to leave that church. Um, mm. and it was, it was really hard and it was really sad. And yeah, I remember when that was happening and walking through that with him and praying for him. And he was reflecting on that situation now several years after the fact. Mm. And he was talking about how he is just now more resolved to be kind. Mm. Like he is just, what that situation did in him is like, I am not going to be the reason somebody doesn't feel comfortable at church. Mm, like, wow. and he's just, he's got that commitment now in a way he didn't have before. And it took a mm. really hard situation for that to sort of be pressed into his mind of like, now he understands the importance of it in a way that he didn't before. And it's not like he was unkind before. As long as I've known him, he's been extremely kind, mm. but he, mm. that, that resolve is so crystal clear in his mind. And, uh, I, I hate that he had to learn that lesson that way. Yeah. Wow, though. Wow. Man, praise God for <clears throat> the resolve, the conviction. Uh, as sad as the situation it was, I imagine, and how discouraging it is, it's super encouraging to hear um, his conviction in light of that. Yeah. So this that brings us actually to our last question, which is just what should a person do if they find themselves in a setting with an uncharitable culture? 
Mm. Mm. Well, that's that's sad. Um, and that's a reality, being in a fallen world, that these things are going to be the way. It's going to be that way sometimes. And so, uh, um, yeah, I would say pray. <laughs> pray fervently for the people um, that's, you know, contributing to us towards that culture. Uh, pray for one's own heart. Pray for wisdom. I would also say it would be great to process these things with the mature brother and sister in Christ, <clears throat> you know, again, to help make sure you're seeing things clearly, to examine one's own heart and life, to make sure they don't have a log in their eye, to examine one's own heart and actually to see, are there ways that I've contributed mm. to this culture being, un, uh, to this culture being uncharitable, you know, and repenting of the, it's not to say that that is the case at the same time, it's to say that you don't want to rule it out in and of itself. Yeah. And so you want to examine your own heart and those things are done well in the context of mature brothers and sisters who love you, who will be honest with you. And so I would, I would say those things, I would say, uh, have personal conversations with people within, um, uh, whether it's the local church or that group, like try to have conversations with them, pray for change, even bring like, hey, this seems unchristian. <laughs> the culture, see, you know, you want to do it in love, you want to do like as in person as you can with per, like, you know, one on one convos if possible. Um, and you got to be patient. Uh, and sometimes, like, the reality is you just might have to leave. And there's yeah. nothing sinful about that in and of itself. Yeah, well, I'm envisioning a bunch of different settings. So, like, I, yeah. you're, you, you, most of that answer was about like the context of a local church, and mm -hmm. you know, may it not be so that there would be churches which is critical, ungracious, uncharitable cultures. But I know it happens. I'm yeah. also thinking this applies to your job. I, I was mm -hmm. just having lunch with a brother at church who works at a big bank in downtown Birmingham, and uh, the culture there seems very critical. Mm. And, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what his setting is. He might not have the opportunity to go get a different job. Yeah. And gosh, if all of the Christians left all the hard jobs mm -hmm. in the world, you know, where's the, where'd the salt and light go? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. It's just, um, there, we're all going to have opportunities to model Christ likeness mm -hmm. and Jesus didn't make everybody a pastor. You know, no. there's the glory of God in a Christian banker uh, doing his work unto the Lord and loving his neighbors. That's Come on. that's a witness, right? Facts. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would even say, like, man, hey, fast and pray Yeah. for that job, for that, the, the group of people, you know, your coworkers, your colleagues. Again, especially if you can't, like— to the point you say, like, man, to where I go, if you have to remain there, all the more fast and pray. Again, not saying you got to look to leave immediately. At the same time, God may call you to stay. And if he does, fast, yeah. pray, reach out to people for accountability, reach out to people for encouragement, um, to where you can persevere um, and, and really seek to be salt and light in the ways that you communicate um, to not contribute uh, to a culture of being critical. You know, um, and, and do it with humility, obviously, because you don't want to be like, man, I'm going to kill y'all with kindness. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, it's real and it's hard. Um, but praise God that we have a sympathetic high priest, though. Yes. And, yeah. and, and praise the Lord that Jesus is tender, like you know, Matthew 12, he will not break a Bruce Reed. He will yeah. not put out a smoldering wick. And so there, I imagine there are brothers and sisters who are who are beaten up and greatly discouraged by this, to which I would just want to remind them, like, Jesus sees it. Jesus knows. Jesus yeah. can sustain, and he will. He often does, and he uses his people towards that end. Um, so, yeah. That's a great place to end it. Why don't I open us in prayer, and you can close it, and we can just ask for the Lord's help in this. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you that you promise to help your people and you 
have given us your spirit to make us more like Jesus. And that's what we want, Lord. We want to be more like the Lord Jesus. We want to be as kind and as patient and as loving towards everyone, whether we agree with them, disagree with them, like them, understand them. Uh, we we want to love all of our neighbors. And we ask for your help in that. We ask for help for our listeners. Um, we hear enough feedback to know of some of the difficult situations some of them are in. And Lord, I pray for them as they deal with difficult churches or families or coworkers. Um, make them like Jesus and make that a compelling witness to all who can see them. In Jesus' name, mm-hmm. amen. Amen. Father, we do pray for those who are discouraged and sad. God, that they will know that you are near to the brokenhearted. You do not withdraw from your people who are hurting, but you draw near. And Father, we pray um, for all, all Christians, all of us, God, that we would be a people who are loving, God, who are eager to show love, who seek to walk by your Spirit and bear the fruit of the Spirit, especially in the con- in these conversations about ethnic harmony. God, uh, may we be loving, may we be winsome, may we be humble, as my brother talked about. Um, Lord, may we yeah, really seek to reflect Christ. May our gaze be upon Jesus, knowing that you will transform us into his image from one degree of glory to the next. And we pray that that will be evident um, by your grace in us showing charity and us being charitable towards others. Father, we pray that our disposition, our attitude, our words— um, will be so set apart, God, that it would cause people to see the difference that you have made in our lives, that it would testify to your saving work by your grace and for your glory. Um, Lord, may Christians be set apart in this. May we walk in love um, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all for listening. Grace and peace. Thank you for listening to this episode of United We Pray. You can find more information about our work at uwepray.com. That's U-W-E-P-R-A-Y.com. United We Pray is a donor-supported ministry, and if you are interested in supporting our work, you can find out more information on the website.